every wonder weapon ranked from worst to best. What is a wonder weapon? For the sake of this video, it is not a specialist, equipment, melee, etc. I would define it as a weapon of mass destruction you can hold in your hands and consistently fire. What makes a good wonder weapon? There's lots of different angles we can take. How fun is it? How safe is it? How easy is it to get? But ultimately, a good wonder weapon boils down to how far can it carry you? How good is it for high rounding? Not sheer power, not endurance alone, but both. What is its max potential damage? My rules are the weapon will be fully upgraded. It will be in its OG form, so no remasters, and there will be no performance enhancers allowed. No gobblegum elixir, etc. It's also important to note that there are two games in particular that have a zombie health cap, meaning the health caps out at a specific round. For Black Ops 4, it's 35, and for Cold War, it's 55. This essentially means that the wonder weapons in these games are a tad inflated, so take it with a grain of salt. And by the way, for this and the rest of the series moving forward, we are doing Treyarch only. World at War through Cold War, no icky vanguard. And lastly, Rabbit and I made a tier list to help make and contextualize this video. It is on the second channel, Tim Talks. I will link it. Please go over there and subscribe. Check out the other content as well. I heard you grows about six inches if you do. Slap a like here as well, and let me know in the comments what you would like an updated ranking on next. First up, a wonder weapon so bad that it doesn't even deserve an official placement on the list. And that's the Thrustodyne Aeronautics Model 23, AKA the Jet Gun from Transit. In theory, on paper, it is one of the best wonder weapons of all time. It has infinite ammo, it recharges. In practice, it is the worst. It is the only wonder weapon of all time that breaks, which is a disqualifier for me. Having to build it once is painful enough, but when, not if, when it inevitably breaks, you have to repeat that process. There is absolutely no in-between. You either have it at the very top of your list or at the very bottom, or in my case, not on it at all because it doesn't even deserve it. We're off to a great start. At number 37, the official worst wonder weapon of all time, we have bo one Winter's Howl. It deals the least amount of damage of any wonder weapon of all time, and it's not particularly close. At about 100,000, which sounds like a big number, I promise you it's not. It is not going to kill zombies for very long. At number 36, we have Call of the Dead's VR-11. On solo, I must add, because on co-op, it has an obscure zombie blood insta-kill ability that you and your friends can manipulate. But I'm completely dropping that because I don't think it's fair that you have to play with multiple people in order for it to work at its peak. It's an interesting weapon to rank because it doesn't actually deal any damage, rather turns them into people who distract the zombies and then eventually die. So it'll always at a minimum get you 24 kills and potentially even more if you shoot the zombie multiple times for the explosion, which is just more than the Winter's Howl is going to get you on high rounds, but it's still hot garbage. Speaking of which, at number 35, we have the all-time classic ray gun. Outputting 700,000 or so damage until Cold War, which is an absolute behemoth. It is a million times better, but again, we're not considering remasters, just the OG ray gun. I just don't think it should get credit for fixing a pre-existing issue. The ray gun is a staple in the mode, an absolute icon, but as the mode evolved, the ray gun did not, and it slipped further and further down the list. Now, depending on what round you're on, a full ray gun may not even be able to kill the 24 zombies that a VR-11 does, but it has more than enough damage to repeatedly kill George, thus get the WAF, which does have infinite damage. So in a vacuum on that map, you would rather have the ray gun. I do this with great sadness, but at number 34, we have the VR-11 sidekick, the Scavenger, dealing a little over 800,000 damage, which again, is enough to kill George and get the WAF, but not forever, because you need some of that ammo to kill the actual zombies. It's so cool. It's an explosive sniper, but you need PhD or you will blow yourself up. It also stops one-shotting zombies on round 35, which is no bueno, especially on a map without traps. It blows that one of my favorite maps ever has such a poor collection of wonder weapons. Two subpar guns does not equal one good one. There's a reason why just about nobody has ever reached around 100 on this map. Number 33 goes to Mob of the Dead Sweeper, which can be directly pack-a-punched from the Blundergat. It's gonna deal a little over a million damage and is great for clearing your path, but the further along you get in the game, the less and less it's going to maintain. Just a hair above that, at number 32, we have its 
other variant, the Vitrolic Withering, not to be mistaken for the base Acid Gad. It essentially doubles the total amount of damage and distracts the zombies for you. It is undoubtedly the superior upgrade path, but unfortunately, the explosive damage does actually harm the player and it still drops off relatively early. Eventually, you're going to want to use it as more of a supplement to an acid trap, for example, where you're redirecting them underneath, flipping it on, and letting that do the bulk of the work. Number 31 goes to Garad Krovi's GKZ45 MK3, which we all know means the Raygun Mark III. What's up with the overly fancy schmancy names? 2.7 million damage is a lot, and it's going to reliably kill for a long time. But when we start approaching round 50, 60, you will see a steep decline. I do appreciate its versatility. You can either slow them down or insta-beam them or both for its greatest impact, but the further along you get, the more you're just slowing them down until you're not killing at all. For a while, you are able to safely and sustainably camp but you have no chance of sniffing round 100. Number 30 goes to Origins Lightning Staff, which is a little surprising upon first glance. You think, oh, it's a staff, it's great, they're all great. No, they're actually all very different and the Lightning Staff is far and away the worst. You're able to squeeze just about 6 million total damage, which again, sounds like a lot, but for context, the second worst staff is five times higher than that. Don't get me wrong, for a while it's gonna kill, but it'll also make crawlers pretty early in the game. It's actually majorly disappointing, not gonna lie. Number 29, the Raygun Mark II, which may come as a surprise to many of you, it did myself. Over 24 million damage. It's important to note that the headshot multiplier is going to carry the bulk of that, so you need to be aiming for their heads pretty much exclusively to get its max potential damage. But the Mark II will actually kill zombies very far into the game, unlike pretty much everything we've talked about already. I find it interesting how the second of three ray gun iterations ended up being the best. The first naturally wasn't, but the third also wasn't. They got it right the second time. <laughs> Number 28 goes to the Fire Staff, which is going to get you about 30 million total damage. It is going to kill for a long time. There is one very sad stipulation, however. For whatever reason, at about round 70, this gun just seems to crash the game more often than not. And since we are focusing on the OG BO2 version, I think it's completely fair to take that into account. You will quite literally never bring this thing to round 100, which naturally pulls it down further from where it could have potentially been. And again, it will sustainably kill for a while until about that 70 mark, then you start praying that your game don't die. Similarly, at number 27, we have Buried's Paralyzer, which is probably shocking to many of you. How could it possibly be this low if it infinitely kills? Well, it's complicated. Yes, it has infinite ammo with the recharge, and paired with full trade, you can mindlessly and safely camp. You slowly tap trigger, zombies slowly die. Until again, about round 70. It's arguably the greatest wonder weapon until that point, but it didn't drop off. It jumped off a cliff and instantly stopped killing zombies. And I understand in the gameplay, I'm not at that point, but if you don't believe me, go find out for yourself. The Paralyzer does not reliably kill zombies past round 70 for whatever reason. So while it technically has infinite damage, it also doesn't. This is the cutoff point in the list. There's a rift here, everything going forward, essentially has infinite damage. At number 26, we have our first BO4 wonder weapon from Alpha Omega, the Raygun Mark II X, the purple one. This gun isn't very good and it shouldn't actually be this high, but again, because of BO4's round 35 health cap, it is inflated. It is as good on round 35 as it is 100 and 200, etc. Dual wield Mark IIs are fun, but it's barely pushing a million damage. But again, it hardly matters, especially when you are able to obtain points very quickly, thus charge up your specialist quickly, which, let's be honest, are the real wonder weapons in that game, rinse and repeat. At number 25, we have Voyage of Despair's Kraken. The base and ice Ice versions output the most damage, nearly identical to the Reagan Mark II X. I would place the Kraken above it because it is just a bit safer. Second place goes to the Electric variant, and last goes to Fire and Poison. But ultimately, they all do the same blast effect. It's fun, serviceable, but not outstanding. Number 24 goes to the Reagan Mark II Z, the pink one. This laser shotgun is gonna get you 192 kills, more than the purple one, but 
still not great. At number 23, we have Dead of the Night's Savage Impaler, which as far as I'm aware has infinite damage because it's one-shotting everything all the time, but only has 312 bullets, thus is peaking at 312 kills. Number 22, Zetsubo's KT4, which also has infinite damage, but maxes out at 360 kills. You would think more, but the charge shots use up more ammo. A lot of people dog on this gun. I think it's pretty good, but it's still middle of the pack. A smidge above that at number 21, we have the OG Wonderwaf DG2, which also has infinite damage and also peaks at 360 kills, but I would argue is a little safer than the KT4 because it's going to kill them quicker. Granted, in World at War, Shinonuma's broken and Jug is broken on Doris, so <laughs> it's kind of a weird gun to rank in that regard, but since it's statistically identical in BO1 and BO3, you can look at it either way. Number 20, Nines, Death of Orion, a scorpion whose balls you tickle and outshoots a beam of electricity, which with charged shots kills roughly 400 zombies. It's a bit complicated because the initial zombies that are directly impacted always die, but the residual damage doesn't always kill, so... It's another good example of being a lot better on paper than in practice. When you use it, it doesn't feel all that strong. It takes a long time to kill, but if you max out its potential, it's not so bad. Number 19, the Wind Staff. The only staff with infinite damage, but with by far the least amount of ammo. Checks and balances. Super safe and reliable, just not sustainable. You're gonna get a max of 528 kills. Number 18, the beloved Thunder Gun. Tim, you are a criminal. This is a crime. How can it be this low on the list? We're talking about BO1 here, and it's very important to remember that you do not get power-ups when using the Thunder Gun. In other words, you are not getting max ammos. In other words, even despite having infinite damage, the max amount of kills you'll be able to get is 672. But Tim, in BO3, you can get power-ups. Okay, if you took a test and failed and then retook it and succeeded, does that mean that you didn't fail the first time? <laughs> Look, I get it. It's just as nostalgic for me as it is you. And to be honest, it's the best get the fuck out of my way wonder weapon of all time. But this list is predicated purely on how far these guns will take you. The Thunder Gun has all the power, but none of the endurance. Just above that at number 17, we have the Wave Gun slash dual wield zap guns from Moon. The Wave Gun in and of itself matches the Thunder Gun's full ammo capacity with the additional zap gun ammo. So it's going to get you about 150 more kills at 820. But similarly, is BO1 and doesn't produce max ammos. I suppose the argument that it should be higher could be made because you can use the hacker to flip other power-ups into max ammos, but that costs 5,000 points and you don't have infinite points. Number 16, Blood of the Dead's Magma Gat. It's the best of the Gat family. 624 max kills, which is actually a few dozen kills shy of the Thunder Gun, but places above the Thunder Gun because you actually get max ammo, so it is better long term. Number 15, the best staff, the Ice Staff. This is a painful and complicated placement because it technically does 16 million damage instead of infinite. 16 million is pretty damn close to infinite, but it's not. It'll get you 792 kills, you're constantly getting max ammos, you can take this thing very easily to round 112 specifically, because that is when the collective zombie health surpasses 16 million, thus starts dropping off. So the debate is, would you rather have the weapon that carries you very easily to round 112 but falls off after, or would you rather have a BO4 wonder weapon, for example, which is not nearly as good in a vacuum, but is better for longer, which is a perfect segue into number 14, which is a tragedy, I understand. The Tundra Gun. <laughs> It is an embarrassment, it is a failed attempt at innovation, it is a shell of what the proud spirit of the Thunder Gun once was. It sounds ridiculous, I understand, but the bottom line is it actually has infinite damage, unlike the Ice Staff, and it gets you even more kills at 864 if utilized to its max potential, which is easier said than done, but... Facts are reality and reality hurts. Number 13, Dead of the Night's Alistair's Annihilator, which equally gets you 864 kills, but 
I would place above the Tundra Gun because it's more fun and original. Like I said in the beginning, surface level aesthetic factors don't really matter unless it's a dead tie, in which case I think it gives it the edge. Number 12, and even I was surprised by this, the Sliqua Fire. I thought it would place much higher, at least in the top 10, but it missed it because similarly to the Ice Staff, it doesn't actually have infinite damage. It has 5.5 million damage, which gets you all the way to round 100 exactly. It'll get you 1200 kills. It's one of the easier weapons to utilize, assuming you don't slip off the edge. You got to be careful about that. But after round 100, it begins to noticeably decline. Now, the reason why I have it above the Alistair's Annihilator and Tundra Gun, for instance, despite infinitely killing in the BO4 engine, is because the Slick of Fire actually kills more than enough to get you to 100, whereas the weapons below it aren't actually getting you enough kills to get you to that point in the first place to then have that advantage of being better for longer. Unless you're constantly getting max ammos, but that is a variable that can't really be accounted for. Number 11, the Apothecan Servant. From Revelation specifically because that is the map you can pack a punch it on. A lot of people think it should be higher. People regard it as the very best wonder weapon of all time, and I think that's silly because unless you are using alchemical antithesis, the gobble gum, it is not. You do not have enough ammo for it to be the best of all time. It's a lot like the thunder gun where you basically can't die with it, but it's only going to get you a little over 800 kills before it needs another max ammo. Don't get me wrong, I love fisting intergalactic squids just as much as the next guy. And if we were comparing peaks alone, it would potentially be number one, but longevity matters. Cracking the top 10, we have the bows from Derizen Drac. Take your pick, they are all statistically identical, they just do it in different ways. They all have infinite damage and peak at a little under 900 kills. I would personally rank Void number four just because it takes the longest to kill. I would put Wolf above that at number three because it is the fastest and safest. I would put Fire at number two just above that. And the best, as far as I'm concerned, is the Stormbow because it is the easiest to camp with. All of them could be in a different order for killing Panzer specifically, but overall, camping with a Stormbow. OP. At number nine, we have Togder Toten's German Heart Attack. I'm going to try to pronounce this correctly. The Wunderwaffe DG Schafschutz. Did I get it right? Please don't shit me in the comments. I'm just as disappointed as you are. It is kind of an embarrassment that this knockoff scoped WAF ended up making the top 10, but it does have infinite damage if you are aiming for their heads. You can get just shy of 1200 kills when going for headshots, which is actually incredible. It's another theoretical versus practical debate. In theory, if you maximize it to its fullest potential, it is one of the best wonder weapons ever. In practice, it is difficult to use, let alone master. If you have, it's probably Time to put down the controller. Too much BO4. At number eight, we have the Hands from Ancient Evil, the best of which being Karen, because it's the only one that has infinite damage. It brings in their attention, drags them down to hell. Super cool, but does take a little while to kill. It's not my preference. That would be Oranos, right below that, because it kills really quickly. Just below that, I would put that badass Sunbeam Himera. And last, I would put Gaia, just because it seems to be the least consistent. Although, they can all get you a max 1,200 or so kills in their fully upgraded Exalted forms, which gives you that ammo increase. Number seven, the Raygun Mark II V the orange one. I must be using this incorrectly. I cannot maximize this weapon. Apparently, it can get you almost 1,300 kills because one uncharged shot, if shot in the exact right place, can take out an entire horde. Was there an update? Was there a patch? I don't know what's going on here. It feels like the worst, but evidently, it's not. I can't explain some of these things. This one put a smile on my face. At number six, we have Shangri-La's 3179JGB215, aka the baby gun. So because it has infinite damage and a ton of ammo, you start off at a shade below 1200 kills, but with the loophole that are the monkeys, you can technically get infinite kills because you can turn any power up into a max ammo and constantly and sustainably refill your ammo for free mind you you don't need the hacker you don't need to spend tens of thousands of points every time a drop spawns in you can get a whole new loadout it is spectacular 
a little challenging to use and technically doesn't actually do any of the damage. You're shrinking them down to be able to do it yourself. And the idea of running into a horde of zombies to kill them isn't ideal, but if it works, it works. Stay safe. I love this gun so much. My favorite of all time. We are now officially in the danger zone. We are cracking the top five with the best Alpha Omega Ray Gun Mark II V the yellow one. All of the following weapons can infinitely kill because they have a self-replenishing ammo supply. And unlike the paralyzer, it doesn't crap out around 70. In this case, you shoot a stream of electricity that constantly recharges even when put away. So you have this non-stop ammo supply on a game where the zombie health caps out at 35. It's a recipe for, as Buzz Lightyear would say, infinity and beyond. Not to mention, even if you don't have the patience to slowly chip away at the horde, you can just get enough points to perpetually use your specialist. Number four goes to the DIE Shockwave from DIE Machine. Same situation here. Once you're out of ammo, you can replenish it by sucking the zombies. The reason I have it above the Raygun Mark II V is because it's outputting more damage. There are multiple variants of it, but the truth of the matter is the OG Shockwave is better than all of those elemental variants, so they're not actually worth going out of your way to get. But if I had to rank them, number four, Poison. It just takes the longest to kill. Above that, Ice. Above that, Electric. And above that, and number one, Fire. It does the most damage. But ultimately, that doesn't even really matter. Number three, Forsaken's Crystal Axe. It is versatile. You can swing it around as an axe, or you can fire it like an SMG. When you kill zombies, they drop crystals to the corresponding one you're not using so that you can alternate it and constantly replenish your ammo. I place it above the shockwave because it's outputting more damage. At number two, we have the Ray K84 from Firebase Z. Initially, I didn't think you could constantly replenish your ammo, but then it quickly dawned over me that the Mimics and Manglers drop salvage, and if you're utilizing one of those specific camping strategies with Ring of Fire and they're pouring towards you, walk forward, grab the ammo, you can just camp there forever and be virtually indestructible because the health cap is at round 55 for the zombies, so. Reike, what would have been a lot lower, ended up for that reason, making it to the second best wonder weapon ever, only to be topped by the final Cold War wonder weapon, exhilarating, I know, the Cerberus from Maurder Toten, which operates in the exact same fashion as the Reike, except you literally don't have to move, you can just point it straight and fire endlessly. Find a place to hunker down, ring of fire, constant salvage from the bosses. And on top of that, the regular zombies are constantly dropping attachments for the Cerberus, which gives you a total refill. So you have not one, but two different sources of infinite ammo, making it the single greatest wonder weapon in zombies history within the context of that health cap. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe again. Comment down below what you would like an updated ranking on next. Don't forget to check out the second channel, Tim Talks. Watch Rabbit and I make the tier list. That helps contextualize this video. And with that, I love you. Have a phenomenal day.